My house isn't mine as such. They pretty much dictate how things are in the house. There was some damage. That's just how they are, and that is what happens when you've got a house full of that many dogs. When Tamara Lloyd of the Alternative Animal Sanctuary in Lincolnshire went on Channel 5 and did a documentary about um, the amazing amount of dogs that she owned, um, she could not have foreseen the future that was to befall her in that um, certain headlines like this popped up. Owner of Animal Sanctuary admits dead cats and a half cremated dog have been found by RSPCA at her site. Yes, not what you want to see, not the um, the perfect advertisement for what could happen to your dog should you um, hand them over to this lovely lady tomorrow. Um, but fast forward a few years and she is no longer in charge of that animal sanctuary in fact it's been shut down but she is on the internet at the moment pleading her um, misunderstanding amongst those who wish to listen and it's a very good read this is what happened very very recently Tamara posts on one of her groups which she happens to be in with a bunch of other people and she says I thought I'd been missing out on her harassment for a few weeks police phoning in the night then turning up this morning they are still desperate to prosecute me for holding the mad cat wham as a slave oh the excitement of my life I'm relieved there is no crime and the police have nothing to do. So she's very clearly a little bit bitter towards the um, police involvement in this case, which she had ongoing. She's also posted, I can't, I can't believe that for some people, if not the majority, that honesty isn't that important. So she goes on to say how how being honest towards uh, things is very important and she can't she can't understand why it's so um, difficult for people to be honest um but at the same time she is very knowledgeable in the things which have happened such as this yes this is a an actual stable where she kept horses i know the conditions aren't great and then these are pictures of the police when they raided the property and removed the animals the rspca did and um, yeah they took the animals away but she pleads honesty um amongst her peers and then just doesn't give actual honesty which is ironic but she did manage to pull the wool over people's eyes and got them on the side. Like this person commented to her, I think you must have really pissed off the local Freemasons tomorrow. If someone wrote about what you've been through recently, it would be dismissed as too far-fetched. So as you can see, her tales of woe um, have really hit home to um, other like-minded people who don't seem to understand what she has actually done. Um, she replied to that and said, as the police say, um, I'm mental. It does become more and more difficult to sound sane. They say the truth is stranger than fiction. Um, but people do think I'm making it up until they see things for themselves. The government vet said the two weeks the RSPCA were presuming them over me was the worst two weeks of their lives and they both left their jobs i said they should try being me dealing with them for the last 15 years so i'm glad she's got her sense of humor but as you can see she is trying to make everybody believe that she is in fact innocent in all of this and she nothing has happened to it in fact it's just a vendetta the police are out to get them the rspca are out to get her and um it's not even as if she did anything wrong nothing that um <laughs> yeah maybe these pictures here were uh, be made up and as you can see the um conditions weren't the best you know you've got dogs actually drinking out of a dirty pool here which is um not the best is it it's not what you want out of a sanctuary for animals 
crumped in there like a chicken coop um, and all sorts right it doesn't seem to be any sort of organization coordination and they just seem to be sat and in, in squalor basically it's not the best is it at all so it's almost as if these pictures don't exist of what it was actually like when she's trying to justify her actions um but also fortunately um as i mentioned pre previously there was a documentary put out which she was a part of having 60 housemates might seem excessive but that's just the ones that live indoors. Another 46 live in outbuildings. That one's Scarlett. That's Idris. That's Bruce. That's Roy. Giving her a grand total of 106. This is Ricky. He's deaf, so you can say whatever you like to him. <laughs> But not long after that documentary aired, they hit the headlines again, right? Owner of an animal sanctuary admits dead cats and half cremated dog have been found by the RSPCA at her site, which is not good again, as I mentioned before. It goes on to say the owner of an animal sanctuary, which has been visited by police and the RSPCA twice in a week has lifted the lid on what conditions were like on her site. More than 80 animals were removed from the alternative animal sanctuary in New York, which is near Boston in Lincolnshire, last Thursday, May the 16th, that's 2019, when the RSPCA, assisted by the police, entered the property amid concerns for the welfare of animals. Tamara Lloyd, who runs the sanctuary, admitted that the conditions inspectors had found on the site were not good after inspectors found two dead cats and the cremated remains of a dog. Now, that off the bat is insane. How in fuck's name has that actually been a thing, right? Honestly, these dogs are given to her to look after because other people can't look after them and she's tried to burn one of them don't know honestly however she claims the response of the rspca has been heavy-handed while the public response has been amazingly unpleasant obviously you know you burn dogs and things like that it's not a good thing even if this dog was passed away that is just sick right honestly authorities then returned to the property a week later on thursday may the 23rd for a follow-up visit to see if improvements had been made following the original raid mrs lloyd said despite warnings from her solicitor that and the fact the police didn't have a warrant she let the police in as she had cleaned up the site since the initial visit and had nothing to hide the only thing they could complain about is the wild pigeons had no water, which as I let them in as I let them on my property, I was responsible for, she said. However, she said it was a far cry from the conditions inspectors found when they entered the site last week, which led to the removal of 61 cats, 14 pigs, five dogs, and five horses. How in God's name have you managed to get a sanctuary which has a such a wide range of alternative animals okay it just seems a little bit like come bring your your pets come bring your animals um and, and I'll, I'll you know stick them on a bed somewhere in the house i don't know it seems a little bit um outlandish mrs lloyd said that a lack of of help at the sanctuary meant it was difficult to stay on top of things and this was compounded when some of the animals died as normally someone would help her remove them because i don't get any help when one of the big dogs died i didn't have anybody to help me lift her in the car so all i could do was try to incinerate her no no that's not all you could try to do right i'm, I'm sorry but there must be something else this is an actual charity, incidentally, who have raised millions and millions of pounds over the years. And there must have been something that they could have done financially in order to remove the dog rather than just try to burn her. Right? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not having that as an excuse at all. 
She said, I wasn't happy about it and it made me feel quite sick, but it seemed the better of two things to do. What was the other thing? I'm guessing she means to bury it. I'm not sure though. But obviously I hadn't made a very good job of it and there were remains that the RSPCA found and that has escalated into a lot of stories that have come out. Well, the stories which have come out is that she has burnt a dog, which she has burnt a dog. It's not just a story. Also, if you're living on a property, which she was at the sanctuary, how in God's name do you actually live there knowing that there's a half burnt dead dog? on the property it would i i couldn't do it honestly i couldn't do it i don't think many people could do it i would hope that's the case anyway she said that she knew some of the cats had died but was, but was not able to find them due to the large size of their enclosure i did look but i clearly didn't look hard enough she said the rspca did find three cats and that clearly does not look good but it was an exceptional case not run of the mill now again she's saying that she knew that some cats had died but she she had no idea where they were which again is very very wrong on so many levels just the blase way that she's explaining it away to say oh well yeah I, we, we knew that there were some dogs uh, some cats that had passed away but we just could not locate them right that's not good enough try harder right you know how many animals you have on your on your property right you're looking after them but you don't know where they are it just seems a bit like, well, what can you do sort of thing, right? If I'd asked people, can you take the animals so I can catch up with the cleaning for a week, nobody would have been interested. But then you have a great big crisis and everybody wants to get a piece of the action, Ms. Lloyd said. So she's complaining basically that she had no help when she needed it, but now she doesn't need it. Everybody wants in on it, right? But again, right, I'm not saying anything. Well, I actually, I am. But again, as I pointed out, they have made millions, close to 10 million pounds over the course of the, the amount of years that they've been running. There is no way they couldn't just have paid somebody to come in and do a job if they wanted to, but they didn't want to, so they didn't. A lot of people have been amazingly unpleasant considering they've they've been sending me their animals for years. Well, obviously, you know, if you send your animals to them, you expect them to be looked after. I think that's the key, right? You just don't just say, right, can you take my, my animal? I can't look after them for whatever reason. But you can do with them what you want, right? That's not how it works. Now, Ms. Lloyd says she has asked friends to take the rest of her animals as she fears what the RSPCA could do to them, <laughs> which is a joke, right? Because of the way that she has been treating the animals for, for so many years, right? They've taken five big dogs, two of them I'm really worried about because they've got behavioural problems, she said. Because I was so panicked about the RSPCA, I, I asked people I thought to take them. So apart from the RSPCA and police investigation into this charity, the uh, into Tamara Lloyd and the way the animals were being treated, there was also a charity commission investigation inquiry into it to see whether or not they were able to still run as an actual charity, given their mainly to do with financial controls and things like that but here's what they found but this is a brief rundown because there was a lot to go through the issues under investigation were uh, to see whether the trustees acted in the charity's best interest and acted in accordance with their legal duties responsibly managed the charity's resources and financial affairs including the charity's debts solvency and the adequacy of of the charity's financial controls ensured that the conflicts of interest had been adequately avoided and managed complied with their reporting duties including the submission of the charity's annual reports and accounts to the commission prudently managed the, the, the arrangements with a third-party fundraising agency and that th fundraising agency plays a prominent part in this report and in the inquiry 
Now, there was a lot going on in this inquiry, but part of it found that the trustees had failed to properly manage conflicts of interest. For example, the sanctuary was run on a property owned by the chair, that is Tamara Lloyd, but no formal lease agreement existed, which set out the details of the arrangement for the charity's use and occupation of the property. So basically, basically fundraising funds came in and paid for the place where Tamara also lived. Uh, but it was also acting as a sanctuary for the, the animals. So there really needs to be like a segregation there and a, an agreement which sets out what is paying for what and how much is paying for how much, etc. The inquiry found that the trustees failed to identify the pr and properly manage conflicts of interest when administering the charity, particularly in relation to decisions that made, th made that resulted in personal benefits to the chair. The trustees could not provide documentary evidence de demonstrating how key decisions that resulted in benefits to the chair were made or how conflicts of interest were managed. For example, the charity spent significant charitable funds on work to the chair's property. This decision should have been made by a quorum of unconflicted trustees. Uh, basically, money was being used that they'd fundraised for the charity to upgrade the property where Tamara Lloyd lived. Although, obviously, that was also the sanctuary where she lived. So it was a conflict of interest in that sense. The inquiry found that high level of costs and fees associated with the agreement resulted in a very low proportion of publicly donated funds being passed to the charity to further its objects. Now, this is relating to the... Um, this is relating to the the agency which they use to fundraise on their behalf and this is the insanity of it okay so when you are donating funds to a charity check how much is going to the actual charity and not to crap right because the majority of the money was going to this uh, fundraising agency in order to fundraise further right and this is insane it's insane that they even did this but um, what it found the the inquiry found that in the lifetime of the charity's agreement with the agency which ran from 2008 to 2020 the total income generated by the arrangement was 10.6 million pounds that's how much the the agency raised on their behalf 10.6 million pounds total income received by the charity amounted to 1.8 million that is 1.8 million was given to the charity from the money that they raised so only this represented less than 18 percent of the funds raised from the public being directed to the charity for its use in fur furtherance of its objects with over 8.8 .8 million being consumed by the costs and the fees associated with the agreement and as i said that is absolute insanity and i would be furious if i knew that that was the case and finally, based on the Commission's findings, the Chair and one other trustee were disqualified from acting as trustees, um, with the Chair being disqualified for the maximum period available of 15 years, which I believe that she has recently been trying to um, sort of appeal against. But there you go um that is the situation with tamara lloyd if you come across this lady this is actually what happened with her charity the insanity that she she actually kept her animals in those in that squalor is incredible um allowing animals to die on site and just not disposing of them and just just losing them you know the cats just not being located so just let them stay there um incinerating a, half a dog um and then just misusing all the funds that she's raised over 10 million pounds has been raised over the lifetime and just hardly any of it went to the charity to um to, to carry out what 
the funds were supposed to be for. Anyway, if you have appreciated this video, please give it a massive thumbs up. Comment all of your thoughts about it down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Until next time, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.